being here. It, it is continuing to be fall outside and it is going. A <laughs> couple of things I want to mention to you before I open up in prayer today. Number one is this is a testimony service. So I hope that you've been thinking about what you can share about what God has done for you this year recently. Whatever the story is, we want to hear from you tonight. This is an opportunity for you to overcome the enemy by the blood of the Lamb and the word of your testimony. So what we'll do is we'll sing a song or two and then we'll have some testimonies and then we'll worship the Lord some more and have some more testimonies and we'll close our service out with communion. Tonight when we get ready to uh, receive our offering, I just want to remind you that if you were not here Sunday or you did not become prepared on Sunday to give in the Thanksgiving offering, you can do that tonight. Just We're not going to receive two separate offerings. You can just mark that on your envelope and just mark Thanksgiving next to any amount that you would like included in our special uh, twice a year offering, one we do at Thanksgiving, one we do at Easter. But we're glad to have you here. Let's, let's stand and open up in prayer and get ready to open this service with a song of glorious praise. Amen? Amen. 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 Father, we thank you for this night. We thank you for the opportunity we have to come and worship you and to glorify your name, to lift you up and to exalt you in song and with our testimony. Holy Spirit, I pray that you move upon the hearts of your people tonight. God, and bring back to their mind and some of them have it already prepared in their hearts of how to give you praise and thanks by sharing a testimony of the goodness of God. And Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to do that. We thank you to be able to come together just glorify your name. Holy Spirit, move among us as we worship and as we give glory and honor to God our Father, God the Son, and you, Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's put our hands together and lift our voices and praise the Lord tonight. All right, y'all clap your hands.
the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endureth forever. Amen. And the little church I grew up in, and they used to say, I don't know what you came here to do, but I came to praise the Lord. So I came to sing and shout. I came to clap my hands. I come to stomp my feet, and I come to leap for joy. Amen. That's what I come to do tonight. I hope you come to do the same thing. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise in the house. Amen. I want to welcome my, my guests, and I want you to feel at home for our first-time visitors. Do I have any first-time visitors in the house? Let's give our first-time guests. Amen. Good God bless you. You may have your seats in the house of worship. Amen. We thank God for you for being here. Amen. Yeah. Uh, and Pastor already said that uh, I know some of y'all have been sitting on that, that uh, testimony for about a year. And, and you know, I sneak mine in. I know I be cheating now. I sneak one in about every Wednesday and Sunday. But I know some of you have been sitting on that testimony. And uh, please give your testimony. The Bible says we overcame by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. Amen. I want to make mention a couple, some announcements, and we'll receive our tithe and offering for the night. Uh, the announcements, uh, Camp 5 Christmas Party will be Tuesday, December the 5th. And man, that's the road prison right here in Cantonment. Our harvest is responsible for side dishes, desserts, and rolls. We, uh, we, we, we believe we'll be feeding at least about 100. We want to pair uh, to uh, feed at least about 100. Uh, strong men. Man, a lot of times they've been out working and they have a big appetite. So we want to prepare as a sign-up sheet in the lobby. You can sign up to bring something or prepare something or you can just give a, a donation towards something. But we want to be a blessing uh, to the Camp 5, the men there. Uh, when we go over and talk to those men, we're preparing those men to go home and be the priest of their household. Amen. And I've seen some of those young men in Walmart. I've seen them at, at uh, McDonald's, and they give the testimony how they came home and, uh, and, and changed the atmosphere at their house. Amen. And, and God is, uh, is pointing that whole family in the right direction because of what they learned there in prison. Amen. And, and uh, would harvest their ministry every week. A next announcement I want to make mention of our football bank. Food bank, we still need food donations. I did get a call on yesterday about uh, a young man that had, uh, he had been out of work and he told me he had, hadn't eaten in a couple days. I came down to the food bank and I grabbed the last couple cans of Spam and buying a sausage. So the cupboard is bare. So please, please, please uh, be a blessing. And uh, this box is set up in the lobby. You can bring, every, every time you come, bring something drop in the box to be a blessing to those uh, people that are in need. I think we gave 110 boxes uh, last month. And our last announcement is we need Christmas carolers for December the 14th for our food bank and our nursing home ministry. And we're going we're gonna to be caroling while we're giving out food and caroling at the, uh, the nursing home. So please volunteer. I understand it was a great success last time. If you can't sing, you can milly vanilla it. You can lip sing. Amen. <laughs> it's, it's good. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Amen. Well, these are your announcements. Let's make ready to receive our tithe and offering. Offering scripture is from 2 Corinthians <coughs> chapter 9. 10 and 11, it says, Now may he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food supply and multiply the seed you have sown and increase the fruits of your righteousness. And while you are enriched in everything with all liberality, which causes thanksgiving through us to God. Amen. And that scripture says that God is a supplier. He's the one to supply your need. And he also supplied the seed that you're going to sow. He say, and he will multiply the seed even, only if it's sown. You can have the seed if you never sow it. 
it will never be multiplied. He said he was he has supplied uh, your food, but he will multiply that seed with his which is sown. And when that sowing seed is sown, when you bless others in the name of Jesus, those people give God praise. And God given praise by your obedience. And he gives it all to us. I mean, it's it's a wonderful way it works. All you have to be is be obedient and you can be a blessing to others and God will bless you and, and, and it be counted to your righteousness. Amen. Let us pray. Father, Lord, we thank you. We thank you because we know you as a provider, a healer, a comforter, a way maker. And Lord, we're here tonight just to give you thanks and praise for all you've done and all you've already done and all that you will do. And Lord, we ask you to bless these gifts and Lord, make it more than enough to meet the needs of this ministry. And Lord, those that will sow as a special Thanksgiving offering tonight, Lord, we ask you to bless that gift. Bless that gift. Because they're giving it in thanksgiving for what you've done over and abundant, abundantly you've done in their life. And Lord, we ask you to bless them in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. And if you've given, I, I pray that you mark that Thanksgiving offering and the others, and uh, we'll make sure it goes toward the Thanksgiving uh, fund. Amen. And as that pastor, you stand up and we're going to continue our worship.
and honor and praise tonight. We thank you, God, that we have the privilege of lifting the name that is above every other name, that precious and glorious name of Jesus. And we give you praise in that name. Amen, amen. You can be seated for just a moment. Pastor John's going to help me tonight. He's going to deliver the microphone into your hand. Now, I hope that doesn't change your mind about giving testimony. You may not have to talk to the mic. It's all right. Let the whole world know what Jesus did for you. Amen. And so who would like to open our testimony time tonight? We're going to have a couple of these times tonight. Don't be bashful. I see right back there, Brother John. And then we'll come right up here to Brother Danny right after that. I'd like to thank the Lord for saving me and giving me a wonderful wife and a wonderful church. And uh... He's just so good. I've been asking. You know, I had a white squirrel last year mm -hmm. <laughs> and, uh, we had him about three or four months and he disappeared i've been asking the lord to send me another one and today i saw what it worked <laughs> hallelujah <laughs> god cares about his kids doesn't he closer i love the lord and love this church and uh, it's been a good year even though i had surgery and out of work a couple of weeks it's been good love amen the lord. praise god amen, amen. God. brother danny right up here amen I'm sorry, but no, that's Pastor, all right. Come on. I've got to face you Folks. and I speak to you about this. Uh, about 2005, uh, my brother, older brother, died of a genetic disorder called Huntington's, and um, we realized then that my mother and her father died of the same disease. They were just misdiagnosed. My brother wasn't properly diagnosed for about 95% of its life. In 2006, I was also diagnosed with Huntington's and um, was having significant problems. When I went, uh, when I had found out that I had Huntington's, all the doctors around here said, you know, we, they only talked about Huntington's for 30 minutes in med school because they said we'd never see it, so don't worry about it. But um, I went to Emory University Hospital and saw a neurologist there that specialized in Huntington's and he had me talk to a psychologist that counsels families that deals with the Huntington's disease. And he told me then, he says, I'm going to warn you, 95% uh, of the Huntington's people end up in divorce and 85% of them commit suicide. And um, I uh, was Baker acted twice uh, because I was going to commit suicide. I was put into the pavilion over there by the sheriff's department a couple of times. And, um, um, but anyway, when my wife left me, I thought that I was fairly close to being put into an assisted living facility. And, um, but anyway, God directed me to a church. And um, I kept asking myself, God, are you sure you want me at this church? And he would say, Danny, for right now, I want you at this church. There at that church, I met people who taught me how to study the Word of God. They also told me that God wants us well. God's not the one that put this on us. It's the enemy that put this on us. And it's only the word of God out of our mouth that can defeat the enemy. When Paul talked about the armor, our uh, suit of armor, the only, I'm not a football person, but the only, I think it's offensive weapon that we have is the sword which is the word of god Amen. that will come out of our mouth that's right so once i started learning that from people there the church there was a man that started a wednesday night bible study on what the bible says about healing and uh, after a while they told him that he couldn't teach that healing class in that church anymore uh, because it did not line up with their belief system and um, so we went off campus and we started doing the class on a different night and um, because of me learning the word of god 
realizing that it's Satan that wants me sick. Um, I now bump into doctors that haven't saw me in years, and they say, what happened to the Huntington's? Or I'll see doctors and they'll say, you have Huntington's? Yes, that's true, but, and then I told them real quickly, yeah, I had choice. Either I could believe medical science, what they said, or I could believe the Word of God. I chose the Word of God, and that is what killed me. Amen. I thought that I was most likely going to spend the rest of my life alone. But uh, what I realized is that God was not holding Debbie, who was going to come in my life. He wasn't holding her back from me. It was Danny that was holding her back from me until I learned who Danny is in the eyes of God and Jesus. And at that point is when Danny stopped the barriers that kept him from being able to meet Debbie and Joey. And I am so grateful Amen. to God. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Amen. Thank you, sir. What an awesome testimony. Bless you, man. But, uh, Thank you for sharing that. Thank you for sharing that. And we're so glad that God has brought you to this church as well. Amen. Let's do one more and then we'll sing a little bit and give some more of you time to process what God is placing upon your heart. Yes, ma'am. I'm going to start on this road. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want to say in uh, uh, May 2015, I was diagnosed with uh, stage four breast cancer. And as soon as I found out that I had it, you know, of course, I was upset to start off with. But then that night, it was on a Wednesday, and then I went up to the church, and my preacher started to preach, and he said, uh, Woe, Vera, this is for you. And it was Psalms 118.17. It said, I will not die, but live and declare yes, the works amen. of the Lord. And and I have stood on that. There was a lot of times, you know, like I said, just like what you said, the medical said that stage four is not curable. But I believe 100% I am cured. I said, I even going through the chemo, I was never sick. And I said, you know, I went through the radiation and I had surgery. And everything is, you know, has been great other than... I, I was bald and, you know, gained some weight I hadn't lost yet. But other than that, <laughs> nobody would even know it. But one of the things that I did is being bald, I was okay losing my hair, but I was not okay going through the, you know, when they first lost it. But one of the things I did is when people write on their arms, you know, when they have a broke arm on their cast and stuff, I wrote on my head, well, I had the Sunday school kid, I had uh, middle school kids, and uh, they would write on my head every Sunday morning, every Sunday night, and Wednesday night. And I've got pictures all in videos and stuff where they wrote all over my head. And one of the things that they, a lot of times they put on there was Psalms 118 17, which I left that on my head. And I mean, I went to the cancer center everywhere I went with this on my head. <laughs> and I, mean, I got a knot, and everybody always made a flower out of my knot. But, uh, and, uh, so uh, anyway, whenever I was in Lowe's one day and this man, he's like, you know, kind of smarted off a little bit about, you know, why I had all this stuff written on my head. And it gave me the opportunity to witness to him and tell him what God had done for me. And then uh, one of my weakest points is praying out loud. And I've, like I said, I've had to do that with a walk to Emmaus. That was God's first job he gave me was in, in the prayer chapel. He had to pray a bunch. But... Uh, last week, my mom, she had breast cancer, and I had to go with her, take her down and have a mammogram done. And while I was in there, there was a, a young lady, she was 33, she had a almost 12-year-old little girl and a 9-year-old um, a, um, little boy, or 5-year-old little boy. And she was very upset, and she was, you know, concerned because she had found a lump, and, and she didn't know, you know, what to expect and what to go through. Well, I don't know, it was just kind of God drew me and her and we started talking. And, of course, my mom, I had been trying for a while to get my mom to come to church, me and Terry both. And my mom's sitting there in the wheelchair watching. She's like, what are you doing? And I said, this lady wants me to pray with her. And I right there in the, you know, the office and stuff and everything, prayed. And like I said, there was a couple other people in there. and I mean, They didn't say anything. Everybody was just sitting there listening. But I was able to talk with her and pray with her. And her name was Bethany Wilson. And we ended up, you know, being friends on Facebook. And she sent me a message that night after we prayed. And she told me that, that hers was nothing. They said that it would just go away. It was like, you know, just one of the 
caffeine yeah. lumps or something that you get. But I mean, it gave me the opportunity to talk to her, show her the stuff, and just tell her, you know, what God has done for me. Amen. And I said, and, and I said, anytime I get down or start feeling sorry for myself, I remember that when God said, you know, if I had died, I knew I was going to be in a better place. But if I lived, God was going to use me. And I Amen. said, I always think about that. I will not die, but live Amen. and declare the works of the Lord. Oh, what a, and he is good. What a scripture to stand on. Prayer changes things. Not, yeah, you shall not die, but live in the name of Jesus. Well, let's, let's stand back up a little bit and worship the Lord some more. Uh, this next song that we're going to uh, worship the Lord with, the first of the next two, is called Open Up the Heavens. Am I right? I'm good. All right. Open up the heavens. And it sounds like we've heard testimony of that already, how God has opened up the heavens and brought peace, brought healing, brought restoration in the midst of places that the world and even the medical community, and we love the medical community, but even sometimes they say things that we know in God's word are not true. And he opens up the heavens and pours out peace and healing and strength in us. So let's declare it back to him tonight, would you? Let's sing it. Gathered in your name, we're calling out to you. Your glory like a fire, your weakening desire will burn our hearts with truth. But you're the reason we're here, and you're the reason we're singing. So open up the heavens. The mighty river flowing from your heart and filling every part of our breath. Your presence in this place, your glory on our face, we're looking to the sky. Descending like a cloud. You're standing with us now, Lord, unveil our eyes. But you're the reason, you're the reason we're here. And you're the reason we're singing. So open up the hands, we want to see you. Open up the floodgates, the mighty river flowing from your heart. And So open up the hands, we want to see you open up the floodgates, the mighty river flowing from your heart and filling every part of our praise. Show us and show us your glory, show us and show us your power. Show us and show us your glory, Lord. Want to be voice? Show us and show us your glory. And show us and show us your power. And show us and show us your glory, Lord. Come on, sing it out with your minute. Show us and show us your glory. And show us and show us your power. Show us and show us your glory, Lord. One more time, every voice. And show us and show us your glory. And show us and show us your power. And show us. And show us your glory, Lord. We wanna, we wanna see you to so open up the hands. We wanna see you open up the floodgates. The mighty river flowing from your heart. 
Show us your glory, show us and show us your power, show us and show us your glory, Lord. One more time, show us. Show us, show us your glory, show us and show us your power, show us. And show us your glory, Lord. And you give him some praise. Here I am, and here I am, I stand 
With arms wide open to the one, the Son, the everlasting God. The everlasting God. Oh, and here again I stand with arms wide open to the one, the Son, the everlasting God. So I shout out your name From the rooftops I proclaim That I am yours And I am yours And all that I am I place into your loving hands And I take just a moment before you're seated just to lift your hands lift your face toward heaven it says I shout out your name from the rooftops I proclaim why don't you just give him some praise for just a moment glorify his name Father we glorify you we magnify you you're worthy of all praise and God when given opportunity I'll declare your name I will make your name and your fame more widely known so that the kingdom of heaven may be expanded. We'll shout it from the rooftops. We'll shout it from the shopping centers. We'll shout it from the schoolhouse, from the workplace. We'll shout it in a Walmart. Someone's upset. We'll declare the name of Jesus and lift it high. We love you, Lord, in your name. You can be seated going to continue to worship and give thanks and praise by word of testimony and by the way you guys on the platform included in this if anybody wants to give testimony up there you got a mic in your hand so you can just go go ahead miss Dow. you can start i am so thankful for this church i'm thankful for this year i, I was sick for about a almost two years <clears throat> and um Anyway, I'm healed again. God is so good and he's so merciful. And I'm thankful that my son is getting married next year and my soon-to-be daughter-in-law is here. So I'm blessed. I'm just very thankful. For God has been so good. Would you say future daughter? Yes. <laughs> Hallelujah. Did I see other hands up there? Okay, Miss Jordan, then we'll come to Miss Mia. Um, so I'm just going to give my testimony, but some of y'all already know it. Some of y'all may not. Um, so I used to, and I went there as a little kid, and then my parents stopped going, so I stopped going too. Um, and I went back to try to get back into church, and it was like based on popularity groups. So I was always alone, and I didn't really feel like welcomed in and everything. Um, so I knew that it just, it wasn't for me, so I just stopped going. And Derek has talked about before how like if you keep asking and keep inviting people to come to church that they're just going to get annoyed with you and they're going to say, okay, I'll go ahead and go. Um, so a friend of mine that doesn't actually go here anymore um, had invited me and um, she, I was like, no, like I'm good. I, I really don't want to go back to church. And she kept asking every single week and I just got annoyed with her and I was like, fine, fine, fine. I'll come. I'll go. And <laughs> this is about like two years ago. And um, I didn't really want to come because like I kept praying and kept praying that I would have a relationship with God and I didn't have one. Um, when I would pray, I wouldn't feel anything. When p other people would pray for me, I wouldn't feel anything. So I was like, well, you know, maybe it's just not for me. Like, I believe something's out there, but, you know, I don't exactly know what it is. Um, so when I came here, I heard that they were having a skiing trip, which is coming up in January. And I was like, oh, yeah, skiing. I was like, I'm going. And I didn't know anybody here. And I asked my friend if she was going, the one that invited me, and she said no. And I was like, great, well, I'm just going to meet some new friends then. And um, I went, and I met all of the youth group and Derek, and I ended up getting saved. Um, and <laughs> um, it was such a cool experience. My friend got saved before I went on this trip. She's like, Jordan, I don't know what it is, but when you get up there, you're going to cry. And I was like, I'm not going to cry. Like, I don't even feel anything. Like, there's no way. 
And uh, Pastor Rick grabbed my hand and two other people, and as soon as he started praying, I started bawling. <laughs> and it was just so amazing. And um, I wanted to get baptized before I graduated high school because I know that I cannot go through college without God by my side. Right. And um, so I actually got baptized in May, um, right before I graduated. And it's been a blessing. I've been here for two years now, and I wouldn't give it up for the world. How many of you know God, all of us Floridians, God can use snow and skiing to save somebody, bring them into the kingdom, amen? Miss Mia. I am so thankful for Revelation. Um, I've been, you know, building my relationship with Jesus for quite some time. And, you know, a lot of times as I've gotten older, I've always asked God, why am I doing through this? Why is this happening to me? It's always why, why, why? Well, last Wednesday, we closed up our Reformation study. And boy, was that revelation for me, because the last solace was, for God be the glory alone. <laughs> and I went home, I was on my way home, and God hit me with that. Because sometimes when you come to service, or someone says something to you, or serve, a preacher says something, it just, you know, goes kind of one ear out the other. Sometimes it goes in the heart, and you kind of have time to ponder on it. But as I was going home that night, it hit me. I started crying. I was like, wow, there it is, God. All this time, over these past two years, I have been really seeking God in prayer. Like, God, please tell me this reason why this is happening. God does not operate in reason. He operates in, um, what's the word? I just forgot it. Um, what I'm thankful for. <laughs> <laughs> revelation. Thank you. He does not operate in reason. He operates in revelation. And I totally understood that. And, um, and I was like reason reason God does not have to have a reason he is my God I know who he is and so as I got that I was like okay God I'm not gonna ask you no why anymore because no matter what I go through it's always gonna be for your glory and I, I'm accepting that and I'm okay with that God because I know who you are I know who I am in you and it's taken me a very long time to get to the place where I am today and I'm growing with Christ every year as you have a relationship with Jesus it, it doesn't stop right there. It, it grows like a, a father and a daughter. And it's like, I more I go through things, the more I um, grow with him, the more I trust him, the more I trust him, I don't have to worry. And then the word of God, when you're reading it, it, it pulls out and it hits you and you're like, wow. And you just get just that understanding of who he is. I don't have to worry no more, it's the word of God. But our flesh gets in the way. But God in the last two years has transformed my mind because I've asked him to do this for me, transform my mind to a negative, to a positive. And every time the enemy comes and hits me with something, no, you have, the, you have your mind made up, no, I know what you're doing, you're not gonna do this because I am a child of God and he is my father, I am your daughter and I have victory in him. So I am thankful for that word. <laughs> revelation, because God operates in revelation, not reason. And amen, amen. We have one more on this round. We're going to do some more right over here, and then I'm going to come to you, Miss Debbie. All right. Amen. Uh, I just want to give a, a real short testimony. My testimony that I normally would give at the prison ministry would take about three hours. <laughs> so we're going to, I'm, going to, I'm going to do this in sections. But I was born November 11, 1964. And when I was born, the doctors told my mother, don't get used to him because you're not going to be taking him home. He's really not probably going to pull through this, and he's not going to make it. Um, they took me early, about three weeks early. Uh, I was wrapped up in the navel cord of my mother uh, so tight that it was choking me and killing her. And so they had to take me out. And um, when I was uh, born, I was born actually black and blue over my whole body. I was like a little over five pounds. And um, the footprint that I have on my birth certificate is about this big, a little bitty thing, but it was only one foot because they just didn't think I was going to go home. So I stayed in the hospital for about a month. And after my mother, uh, I'd, I'd get really well, then I would go down. Then I would get better, and I would go down. And finally they said, you know, just take them home and see what happens. Well, about eight months, uh, my whole body turned completely red. And so my mother rushed me back to the hospital, thought I had a breakout of something, and come to find out I have what they call Sturgeon Weber disease. And that disease is where I strained so hard that I busted all my cells in my body. And so that's why I have an unusual, just grateful birthmark that the Lord gave me that I will question him whenever I see him. But, uh, <laughs> but anyway, uh, you know, God, you know, the doctors spoke a word, and my mother spoke a word. 
And the word that my mother spoke was, no, my son's going to have life. And, and years later down, I've been in car wrecks where I know the Lord has really had his hand on my life. Um, I married really young. Uh, this is before Ginger, before Jesus. I married really young, and the girl that I married was really, really young. That didn't last long, and I remember laying in bed. Uh, I started drinking, and I had an aunt who came to my house one night, and she didn't, she didn't know exactly why. She drove all the way to my mom's house to, hey, it's Roger here. It's a Saturday night. Roger should be out. No, I was laying in bed crying. I was upset. I've already made my, the plans to commit suicide. I was going to end my life. And she gave me a little tape of one of my cousins who sung a song, I Rise Again. I played that tape, and my life changed again. And again, God had his hands on my life. And then I, I, my friend has made me some uh, DVDs from VHSs and all these old tapes we've had back in the day. And then I've I seen the prison ministry, what God has done and let me be a part of for so many years out there at Camp 5. And then I started seeing some racing tapes where I raced at Five Flags. And there was one race that I, I remember as soon as I saw it, because I've been watching everything, uh, I was on the pole, and I did not qualify very well, so they put the slower cars up front, which was me. And my dad will say, Roger, what is wrong with you? You're, you didn't qualify good at all. Dad, I just don't feel good. I just don't feel good about the night. But anyway, I was out there racing anyway, and, and I remember the Lord just really talking to me, and I, and I really wasn't serving the Lord, but he kept me on a leash long, just was short enough that I wouldn't go too far out. But I remember, you know, going to turn one, and for some reason, I just felt the Lord said, just pull over and let it go. So I did. I just pulled my car over, and they all went around, come out turn two, and one of the biggest wrecks happened on the back straightaway. It took 45 minutes to an hour to clean up. Cars got destroyed. People got hurt. And there was only four cars left, me and a couple of the guys. And then that, we were in racing, and I won the race, and, and I'm thinking, <laughs> there, I was ready to go then. There was no more butterflies, you know, and I'm thinking, Lord, you saved me again. You know, and he has done that all through my life. And I have been defeated. I've been knocked down, but still I stand. Amen. I have broke them chains off of me, and I still stand. And today, I still stand. I'm 53 years old. I just turned 53. And the doctors got it all wrong. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Jesus got it right. Hallelujah. We're going to worship some more. We've got time for some more testimonies. and in just a moment and I loved listening to Roger give that part of the testimony where he said it was before Ginger before Jesus and I was wondering if he was talking about them being one and the same Ginger and Jesus but uh, we're thankful to the Lord isn't, isn't God amazing isn't he just incredible and it's not often enough we get to hear some of these testimonies and some of the things that God has done we're going to have time for some more but Let's lift our voices and sing. Would you stand with me again? And do you appreciate this praise and worship team tonight? They've stood through the whole service. Amen. He builds our life. You know that. And this might be a song that you may not be terrible familiar with, but you're going to love it. It's going to bless your heart. It's the first of the next two songs. Worthy of every song we could ever sing. Sure. 
seated. We're going to take a few more testimonies and then we're going to move into our uh, time of communion. I'm just going to share a scripture with you and then Pastor Al is going to come and lead us to the Lord's table in just a moment. But we're going to uh, worship as we prepare. But I know there's a few more and we've got mics on both sides. Oh, we have right here, right here in front of me. Yes, ma'am. When I say I'm thankful for things, uh, I always have a testimony to back it up and I could go for hours. But I'm going to sum it up by saying that the thing that I'm most thankful for is more than 2,000 years ago in a teeny tiny little country yeah. far, far away, God came down and walked among men. And those men were excited to know him while he lived and walked. And then they got very excited after he died and rose again because Amen. they knew he was who he said he was. And my thing that I'm most thankful for is that story continued and spread down to more than 2,000 years to right here, right now for us. Yes, Where would we be without that? Amen. 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 Someone else. <clears throat> Linda's uh, oldest sister, Barbara, went home to be with the Lord on Sunday. But what she wanted you, you to know that it was Barbara the one brought her here to harvest. Hallelujah. God used her to bring her here to harvest, and she's been here ever since. She amen. was bringing God to praise for that. Amen, amen, amen. We'll be praying with you, honey. Oh, she's getting some of that reward for bringing you into the kingdom. Amen. Miss Dawn. Well, I just want to start off by saying I am walking a thousand miles out of my comfort zone right this second. <laughs> with God started it would be four years in February the first day that I stepped foot in harvest Wow um, it's very emotional for me um, Pastor John was speaking that day they were the church was in tra in transition before Pastor Stacy came um, I heard about harvest through a friend of mine crystal as y'all pretty much know who she is yes um, so me my husband and my son came and our very first day I sat all the way in that very last chair by the door. <laughs> in the you wanted a quick escape? Is that what it was? Yes. Um, and I sat there and I sat there and they went through the beginning of the service and then Pastor John got to the part where, um, you know, if anybody wants to, you know, give their life over to Christ. And I just sat there. Um, everybody's heads were bowed. And I, I just felt that you were staring directly at me. <laughs> <laughs> my head my head was down and I, I just sat there and I sat there and something was just pushing me. I can't explain it. I'll never be able to explain it. Um, and, and I swear to you that you looked directly at me and through me and said, I can see you just 
take the chance. So wow. to you, Pastor John, I thank you for pulling that out of me. Amen. Because it brought me into the most precious family that you could ever imagine. This past year has been difficult for me personally. Um, my mom was diagnosed with breast cancer at the beginning of the year. Um, she's doing well. We had a, a cancer scare with my father-in-law, Steve's dad. Um, they told us it was lung cancer that went to his liver, which is metastatic cancer. Thank God it was not. Amen. Prayers, you know, prayer chains that went around, the people that are just so loving, and you, Pastor Rick and Pastor Tammy, have brought so much um, knowledge to me that I never thought would be possible. I just, I just want to thank you both from the bottom of my heart, and I want to thank God for Amen. allowing me to want to learn who he is, even though I'm still young in learning. I'm going to continue my walk with him, Amen. and I just want this day to make me stronger to be able to open myself to whatever he calls me to do. Wow, praise God. Thank you. <laughs> to God be the glory. Great things he hath done. Amen. And wow, now that you're out of that comfort zone, she spoke pretty well, didn't she? Yeah. Hallelujah. A couple of more. I want to know we got a couple more. I see, a, I see a hand just barely going up over there. Right. Oh, well, we'll go to Bobby, and then we'll go to Miss Darlene right there, John, right in front of you. And I think I saw another hand over here too, Evan. All right. Go ahead, sir. I, my, my testimony is, is uh, what brought us here. You know, we were attending another church, and we just, we wasn't feeling fed. We wasn't feeling like we were really following the Lord there. We, we were falling out. We wasn't participating because we just didn't feel it, you know, and uh, we just didn't know where to go from there. And where we just going to church because it was just a routine thing, not because we wanted to be there anymore. And uh, we just started falling out more and more, and the next thing you knew, you know, it started, yeah, well, we're missing Wednesday, we're missing Sunday. And we really don't miss being there. And it, you know, it goes back to Roger's testimony. You know, with everything he's been through, if it wasn't Roger answering God's call and doing God's work, I probably wouldn't have knew nothing about Harvest because it was that one afternoon I stopped by his house for a yard sale talking with Roger. And that I went home and just something in me was excited about our little talk, just a few minutes about Harvest and him inviting us here and I talked to my wife Melanie about it and she said hey you know I've heard good things about it too let's try it and we've been here ever since Amen. You know, I've been through a lot of health issues and before we came here I ended up in the hospital from work they took me an ambulance with a blood pressure 254 over 178 a little high and a lot of people were praying for me that day because when I walked out of that hospital I had the head cardiologist over told me, he, he says, you shouldn't be walking. You shouldn't be walking out of here. You should be getting carried out of here. He said, you're, you're, you're a miracle that mm -hmm. you're even walking out of this hospital today. Because he said, I've had people with less blood pressures than that ma have massive heart attacks or massive strokes. And for me to be able to get up after going through a surgery and everything and just walking out of there was a miracle. And I knew it, it was God answering prayers and God still has something for me to do here. Amen. You know, and we've just, since we've been here, we've just been excited and get involved with all the things we do. I mean, I never thought I'd be doing anything. <laughs> I'm illiterate. I'm illiterate when it comes to technology. If it wasn't for my children, I wouldn't know how to use my phone. And, uh, <laughs> and when Jennifer put out a call for a rock, she didn't know she was really going to get a rock. Because she's still teaching me. Amen. But, you know, I enjoy it. I enjoy being up here. And I... We, and I can speak for my wife, I think, that we really enjoy what we do here. We enjoy that our kids are enjoying here and, and living for the Lord. You know, everybody knows, like, Spencer Matthew, you've been involved with the competitions, with preaching and singing. Uh, getting Matthew to sing on stage, that's a miracle. Yeah. And uh, it's just, you know, I'm just, I feel we're blessed to be here. Amen. And we're blessed we're to have you. God led us here. Amen. And God put all y'all in our place. And uh, I, just, I thank him for that. Amen. And like I said, it all goes back to, I think, Roger, thank you for answering God's call. I know I've said it before. And I always say it, and I always mean it, that 
it takes, you know, you, you, when God calls for you to do something, do it because you don't know who you're going to touch. That's exactly right. And how right. you're going to affect that person and his family's life when Amen. he does. Amen. You can declare the goodness of God at a yard sale. Amen. Miss Darlene. I don't even know how to use this. Is it working? Just talk into it, honey. It'll carry it out. Okay. Thingy. Um, Lord help me. I'd much rather I had called last week wanting to give. <laughs> to, I wanted to do it over the phone with you because I'm a lot braver that way. Yeah. Um, but God has been so good to me all my life, really. And like he told me, i got to get over this being shy stuff. If I want to help him and give him glory, Amen. I've got to get over it. But um, if I went over my whole lifetime, y'all would run me out of here. But he has been good to me all my life. So I'm going to narrow it down just because I want to really give God the glory for how much he has just moved in my life just this year. Amen. And um, I want to start with right before y'all took up the last offering Special you had. Special offering. Mm -hmm. Special offering. It was just maybe a couple of weeks before that. Um, I had been, you know, up nights worrying about one of my daughters. I'd been raising her son. I'd been praying and crying and all that good stuff and I finally went up to the altar one Sunday and asked for prayer and it was with Pastor Fred and when he prayed with me he told me that and you know how they say one word from God can change your whole life? Mm -hmm. This was one of those experiences. When he prayed with me and he got through, he said, God's got a place for your daughter in his kingdom. Amen. And he said, he's got a place for her here. And then he said something that shook me and rocked me. He said, you believe in me. He said, trust. Trust also in me. Mm. And when he said that, I thought my first reaction was, oh, I trust in God. I can quote Proverbs 3, 5 through 7. You know, I can yeah. tell you word from word. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not until you understand. I know it, okay? But God said, no, you got trust issues. And he said, you don't trust nobody. You don't even trust me. And when he told me that, I was like, in denial. I thought I did. And I said, okay, Lord, help me. Help me to trust in you. And man, this year, at the time my grandson was living with me, I'm trying not to cry because I get okay. emotional, but at this time my grandson's living with me. I'm buying a mobile home, but it's not an ideal situation, you know. I don't own the land that it's on. Um, the roof, I'd been praying two years for a new roof and didn't know how I was going to do it. I'm on a disability income, which is part of my inferiority complex I got here. Because <laughs> people look at you and they say, why is she on disability? And I mean, I've even heard comments, you know. And it's like, well, you can't see. My right. back was broken four places, you know, when I was 17. I'm 57, you know, I'm older than a lot of y'all. And, you know, when you get old, arthritis is in them bones and all. Well, whatever, a lot of other issues. When I went on disability, I was having stomach blockages that praise God. He healed me for those. Amen. But um, getting back to what I was trying to say, um, I'm on a disability income. And I had enough to make it, but I didn't have enough for anything extra. And when you're a homeowner, <laughs> you got to have the extra. You got extras, yeah. And um, I knew I couldn't afford to move the trailer, put a roof on it, and things were needing to be done, falling apart. 
And I was out in the yard working in the flower beds, and I just heard God say, why are you trying so hard to hold on to this place? And I, you know, like, good question. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm thinking, I can't afford rent, you know, and I didn't know what to do. And then I felt like God said, don't you believe I can give you something better than this? And I, I'm like, yeah. But what am I going to do until then, <laughs> you know? And um, so I said, okay, Lord, if it's your will that I sell this trailer, then I pray, Lord, that it'll sell right away. Well, it sold in a week. And I wasn't ready for that. <laughs> you know, it sold in a week. And so Praise I God. didn't know where I was going to go. I went and applied for one of those low-income apartments that's based on your income thinking, well, I'll just go get an apartment. At least I won't have to worry about all that upkeep no more. And here I am with the house sold, and thank God they couldn't move it for a couple of months, and find out that, oh, there's a waiting list at least six months. And that's not all the bad news, because I had my grandson living with me and had been living with me for almost a year. I had to have a place for him to live, too. And they weren't going to give me, they weren't going to let him live with me if he couldn't be on the lease. And I had to have custody for him to be on the lease. And the most and only important thing to me was that I had a place sure. where I could have my grandson. Well, I had already asked my daughter and them to give me custody of Axel. And her and, and the baby's father both flat out refused. They didn't care if I raised him and he lived with me, but they wouldn't give me custody. So here I was with my house sold and no custody and no place for me and Axel to go and no way of knowing how I was going to do it. Well, I got, and I got to be transparent just so y'all know how good God is. I got $8,000 out of the trailer after it was sold. And um, I said, Lord, I, I'm a tither and I knew that God could make 7200 go further than eight thousand yeah, amen and it was the same time when y'all were doing that offering the, the special offering, offering. The resurrection offering mm -hmm. and it was about a week before the y'all actually took up the offering but i'd already heard about it and i just went in and put the eight hundred dollars in an envelope and said i'm gonna give it to god before the devil talks me out of it <laughs> <laughs> i went ahead and gave it and i said lord i don't know what i'm gonna do and this ain't all oh, my car was dead and was no resurrection for it in my brother's yard in 91 honda i didn't have a car or a place to live and a, and a child to take care of and didn't know where else gonna go and i'm like okay i'm gonna give you this and i'm gonna trust you god to work everything else out with the 7200 i got a good car a nice car that god blessed me with a good deal on but only had 1900 left by the time I rented another trailer that I had to rent till I could get into the apartment, and they still couldn't give me any idea when it was going to come available. And it was 300 more a month than what I was paying already. So here I was going to have to come up with 300 more dollars a month and had no way of knowing how I was going to do it. So the first month I had to get into 1900 which put me down to 1600 And I'm thinking the money's going to be all gone and I'm not going to have money to move on or pay deposits or rent or anything, you know, but trust God, just trust God, you know, and Try just to, watch it. Let's do about two more minutes because okay. we got communion I'm yet to go. I'm fixing okay. real quick, I promise. <laughs> but I want to make sure God gets the glory for this. Amen. But, um, so the next month, a $200 gift card from Walmart comes in the mail from my cousin's church. And I called her and I'm like, what's this? And she said, Darlene, it's so wild. It is God. She says, trust me, it is God. She, I'd never even been to her church. It's some Southern Baptist, you know, I right. believe a little different. And uh, so I'm like, well, why did they send it? She said, I had just put you on the prayer list to pray for my cousin Darlene that's raising her grandson. She said, I promise, that's all I told him. And somebody, a couple in that church, don't even know me 
came to them at one of their church meetings and said, God has put it on our heart, a hundred names on their prayer list, and God had put it on their hearts to help this woman that's taking care of her grandson. They didn't know why. The church voted on it. That $200 has come in five months straight in a row. Amen. Praise $1, God. $1,000. And now I've got the money. The apartment I'm moving into December 1st. Praise and I the Lord. had the money to cover everything. Amen. God is good. His provision. Evan, right up here with Evan. And then we're going to, Pastor Al, if you want to make your way up, we're going to go into communion after that. I'll be really short. But um, so God's basically just delivered me and kept me going. And really, I've been tested by a bunch of things growing up when I, uh, most of y'all know my story, but I had cancer when I was a kid and through that he really gave me salvation. Um, and then my mom being, uh, getting cancer through that, he really gave, tested my faith and made it stronger. And then Caitlin going through her tumor, she had a tumor in her, uh, her, her jaw. And through that he like confirmed, well, he helped me test my faith and everything. And he also confirmed that I needed to marry her. And, um, <laughs> Hallelujah! Like, I, I, I already, already knew it, guys. Don't. <laughs> he but, just confirmed it. Yeah, he, he gave okay, me a scripture yeah. for it. A little and, confirmation. Um, basically, God speaks to you through your trials, and if you're going through a trial in, in the low points of it, most of the the most miraculous work that He does happens in your lowest points in life, and it really is crazy that the way Paul puts it. But I really do thank God through my trials because He's blessed me the most Amen. during them. Amen. What incredible testimonies tonight. And I know we haven't heard them all, but we're going to move into our time of communion. There'll be other opportunities for some testimonies to be shared. Thank you to everybody who blessed us and encouraged. Is your faith increased tonight through the words of these testimonies? How God provided for Darlene, how he leads us through trials, how he brings us through severe illnesses, all these things that God has done. And he remains faithful to us. And so tonight as we get ready to come to the we're going we're going to be eating at a lot of tables over the next five weeks amen between thanksgiving and leftovers and family and friend get-togethers and then christmas and i just thought it would be appropriate tonight as we enter the season to to visit the lord's table first before we go to all these other tables that we're going to be sitting at the scripture i was going to share with you tonight i'm just going to read the scripture and you'll get the message without me having to share it Psalm 103. A lot of you know this psalm. It says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. We've heard a lot of them tonight. Amen. So many benefits of knowing him. And then in verse 3, he says, He gives us kind of a list if you will, of some of the things that we can bless his name and thank him for. Number one, who forgives all your iniquities. How many of you are thankful your sins are forgiven? Amen. And then we've heard testimony of how he heals all your diseases. Amen. He redeems your life from destruction. There's a difference from forgiveness of sin and redemption. Remission of sin takes care of the guilt and the payment of sin. But redemption is when he brings your life out of that place of destruction and puts it on a path of life. Who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies. He treats us royally. You're a part of the royal family of God. Who satisfies your mouth with good things. He rewards us for loving him and serving him. And lastly, it says, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Eagles stay strong for most of their life. And I'm going to tell you, as a child of God, as we get older, God renews, constantly renews our strength. We're able to do and endure things we would not be able to do and endure without Him. He is a great and gracious God. And as we prepare our hearts to come to the table of the Lord, Pastor Al is coming to lead us and after we've taken the, both of the elements, we're going to worship the Lord one last time with this song, Oh, praise the name of the Lord our God. Pastor Allen.
brethren are going to pass out the elements, you can go ahead and do that. And just hold on to the cup and the bread until everyone has been served. says in the gospel of Matthew and as they were eating Jesus took bread and he blessed it and he broke it and he gave it to the disciples and he said take and eat this is my body over 700 years before Jesus spoke these words the prophet Isaiah said surely he has borne our griefs and he's carried our sorrows Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. And the chastisement for our peace was upon him. And by his stripes we are healed. As we take the first element tonight, which represents the broken body of our Savior, Jesus Christ, let's lift it up to heaven tonight and say, Lord, we just thank you tonight, Father. There was in your divine sovereign will before the foundations of the world was laid, Father, that your son Jesus would come and he would bear the iniquities of us all upon his body, Lord. Lord, all of our grief, all of our sorrow, all of the deepest pain that we go through in life, Father, your son Jesus took it upon his body that we would be completely and utterly healed. Healed spiritually, healed emotionally, healed physically, Lord. And tonight we thank you. And as we give thanks tonight, and we remember the sacrifice of your son. We say thank you, Jesus, for taking upon yourself my punishment, my sin, my sorrow, my grief, thank you, Lord Jesus. And as I take it tonight, I give you praise, I give you glory, and I give you honor. And I remember today that my health, my emotional, my spiritual healing is all because of you, Jesus. And I give you praise. Let us protect you. says then he took the cup and once again he gave thanks and he gave it to them saying drink from it all of you for this is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for the for, for the many for the remission of sins but I say to you I will not drink of this fruit of this vine from now on until the day when I drink it new with you in my father's kingdom father God we thank you for the blood we thank you for the blood, Jesus, of the new covenant. We thank you, Lord Jesus, tonight that we are not under an old covenant, Father. 
of bondage, Lord God, that we can never fulfill. We can never, Father, fulfill it in its fullest measure, Father. But Jesus, you came down and you fulfilled it all for us, Lord. You poured out every drop of your blood. The Word of God says that when they thought that when all of them were dead, when Jesus had died, they stuck the sword in his side that the blood and the water poured out. Every drop of blood came from you, Jesus, to, to wash away my sins, Father. And I thank you, Lord, tonight that I stand before you clothed in righteousness. I wear a white garment tonight, not because of anything I've done, because I'm a filthy rag, your word says, but because I'm clothed with the blood of Jesus tonight. And I thank you tonight, Lord Jesus, for taking away my sins. And one day I'm going to partake of this cup with you and my and your Father's kingdom. One day, Father, we're going to be together with the Savior and the kingdom. And we're going to partake of this cup together. And Lord, we thank you for that new covenant, Lord. As we drink tonight, let's give him praise and glory for the blood that was shed out, shed, shed out for our, our sins. In Jesus' name, let us partake together. Let's all stand and let's join in singing this. Oh, praise the name of the Lord our God. Cast my mind to Calvary, where Jesus bled and died for me. I see his wounds, his hands, his feet, and my Savior. His body he bound and drenched in tears. They laid him down in Joseph's tomb. The entrance sealed.
beautiful night. Beautiful testimonies of the wonderfulness of our God. I hope that's a word. If it's not, these day and age, you can create your words as you go along. I'm thankful for the greatness and the goodness of God. And Tammy and I just want to take a moment to tell you how much we love you and how much we're thankful for you. Thankful for this place called Harvest that God allows us all to be a part of. We want to wish you and your family and your friends an incredible and wonderful Thanksgiving. We look forward to seeing you on Sunday to further celebrate our Lord. Pastor Fred, will you bless us out of here tonight, sir? Father, we thank you for Pastor Rick and our precious sister Tammy, those who lead the flock. We thank you for your harvest that you called us into in these days. We thank you for this body, the body of Christ, the different members, each one so special, so important. For this local body, but for souls that each one will touch. Lord, as we go to give thanks, some of us with our families, as a Thanksgiving dinner, let us be ministers of your love and your righteousness with those we are with. Let us be instruments of peace and reconciliation. Oh Lord, we bless you. We bless you. We bless you. Could we just lift a hand one more time and thank him for his goodness? Derek, would you do that? Oh, praise. Who oh, praise the name of the Lord our God. Who oh, praise His name forevermore. For endless days we will sing Your praise, oh Lord. Amen, amen, amen. God bless you. Have a happy Thanksgiving. Remember during this season, if you would, as you're gathering around giving thanks to God, to pray for those of our church family that you know are hurting. What a great time for them to receive their healing during Thanksgiving. Amen. God bless you. We'll see you Sunday.